Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello, and welcome back. So we are going to talk about a very interesting um, scroll, manuscript, gospel. Very important one, not only interesting, but important. Well, it just feels good. It, you know, it, it feels good. As we said, when you get down to it, in the early Christian church, there was over 200, 200 zero, zero gospels in circulation. Yes, that's that's quite a lot. But what are what do we have now? We have four, <laughs> you know, we have four. And, you know, the oldest copy, as we said, of of a full gospel is is from really around 300 CE is is when um, it was written. And there are edits and there are revisions. And we spoke also about the fact that all these manuscripts that didn't agree with Constantine's church, uh, which started with the Council of Nicaea 325 AD, were burned. And then anybody that still followed other alternative teachings, then they started to be persecuted. So what we have here is the Essene Gospel of Peace. And we're going to talk about Book 1. Uh, fascinating because, you know, this was supposed to be found in the Vatican Library, hidden away, which is really interesting. Uh, the Essene Gospel of Peace is an ancient manuscript found in the Vatican Library. It's a wonderful document of Jesus Yeshua's teachings and about how to live in harmony with the laws of nature. You know, this is very, very different. But then again, we got four. There was over 200. The four tell a story that the holy, quote-unquote, Roman emperor wanted to tell. Mm -hmm. So he was very selective in what he wanted people to know, and he was selective because he could be. So we're going to actually read it for you guys. And we have it starting out with a very, very familiar scene, you know, people coming to Yeshua, Jesus, for healing. So, and then many sick and maimed came to Jesus, asking him, if you know all things, tell us, why do we suffer with these grievous plagues? Why are we not whole like other men? Master, heal us, that we too may be strong and, and need abide no longer in our misery. We know that you have it in your power to heal all manner of disease, free us from Satan and all his great afflictions. Master, have compassion on us. And Jesus answered, Happy are you that hunger for the truth, for I will satisfy you with the bread of wisdom. Happy are you that knock, for I will open the, to you the door of life. Happy are you that would cast off the power of Satan, for I will lead you into the kingdom of our mother's angels, where the power of Satan cannot enter. And they asked him in amazement, Who is our mother, and which are her angels, and where is her kingdom? Your mother is in you, and you in her. She bore you. She gives you life. It was she who gave you your body. And to her you shall one day give it back again. Happy are you when you come to know her and her kingdom. If you receive your mother's angels, and if you do her laws, I tell you truly, he who does these things shall never see disease. For the power of our mother is above all. Above all. And it destroys Satan and his kingdom and has rule over your bodies and all living things. The blood which runs in us is born of the blood of our earthly mother. Her blood falls from the clouds, leaps from the womb of the earth, babbles in the brooks of the mountains, flows wide in the rivers of the plains, sleeps in the lakes, rages mightily in tempestuous seas. The air which we breathe is born of the breath of our earthly mother. Her breath is azure in the heights of the heavens, Sows in the tops of the mountains, whispers in the leaves of the forest, billows over the cornfields, slumbers in the deep valleys, burns hot in the desert. The hardness of our bones is born of the bones of our earthly mother, of the rocks and of the stones. They stand naked to the heavens on the tops of the mountains, are as giants that lie sleeping on the sides of the mountains, as idols set in the desert and are hidden in the deepness of the earth. The tenderness of our flesh is born of the flesh of our earthly mother, whose flesh waxes yellow and red in the fruits of the trees and nurtures us in the furrows of the fields. Our bowels are born of the bowels of our earthly mother and are hid from our eyes like the invisible depths of the earth. The light of our eyes, the hearing of our ears, 
both of which are born of the colors and sounds of our earthly mother, which encloses us about as the waves of the sea a fish, as the eddying air a bird. I tell you in very truth, man is the son of the earthly mother, and from her did the Son of Man receive his whole body, even as the body of a newborn babe is born from the womb of his mother. I tell you truly, you are one with the earthly mother, she is in you and you in her. Of her you were born, in her you live, and to her you shall return again. Keep therefore her laws, for none can live long, neither be happy. But he who honors his earthly mother and does her laws. For your breath is her breath, her blood is your, bro- your blood, your bone is her bone. Your flesh her flesh, your bowels her bowels, your eyes and your ears are her eyes and ears. I tell you truly, you should fail to keep but one of all these laws. You should, should you harm but one of all your body's members, you shall be utterly lost in your grievous sickness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I tell you, unless you follow the laws of your mother, you can in no wise escape death. And he who clings to the laws of his mother, to him shall his mother cling also. She shall heal all his plagues, and he shall never become sick. She gives him long life and protects him from all afflictions, from fire, from water, from the bite of venomous serpents. For your mother bore you, keeps life within you. She has given you her body, and none but she heals you. Happy is he who loves his mother and lies quietly in her bosom, for your mother loves you, and when you turn away from her, how much more shall she love you if you turn to her again? I tell you truly, very great is her love, greater than the greatest of the mountains, deeper than the deepest seas. And those who love their mother, she never deserts them. As the hen protects her chickens, as the lioness protects her cubs, As the mother, her newborn babe, so does the earthly mother protect the Son of Man from all dangers and from all evils. So, you know, just right off the bat, that is so contrary to anything we've ever seen in Scripture. Right, right. and you know, I'm going to say as much uh, energy and emphasis as they put on the mother, this is how we should put on um, the mother or even the nurturer in our lives but this this really goes into detail how important the mother is and mother earth you know we live on her we we utilize from her and we're to the point now where we're taking so much that she's she's becoming very frail exactly as we said this world is completely imbalance it's it's so unbalanced that it's it's just obvious and pathetic and humanity in the kali yuga lives a very short life. When we're in the other yugas, the lifespan is vastly greater and we are in harmony with the earth. So we are inhabiting these vehicles which are made of the mother and the spirit is of the father, we could view it. And again, that's Shiva and Shakti. Shiva is that which is not because it's not manifest yet. It's just consciousness itself. It manifests into these vehicles through the mother, through the divine feminine. So we could see how when we ignore the mother and when we treat her so badly, our lifespans are going to be shortened. We're going to have all sorts of, you know, different things happening to us as far as dis-ease. And really, you know, life is going to be full of toil and trouble. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what mothers tend to do is give themselves to their children are those who that they're taking care of and and to the point where there should be some giving back but moms never ask for anything back so they give and they give and they give and ultimately they start to break down and this is what's happening it is you know and again this is the imbalance and it's a it's a imbalance that has been created and it's been one that has encompassed the entirety of the earth, poisoned the earth, poisoned all the creatures upon it, and thus poisoned man. And so, you know, this is the way to harmony, is recognizing this. And some forms of Gnosticism view the entire material realm as evil and fallen. It doesn't have to be that way. It's not necessarily the case. I don't feel it's the case. I really, really don't. It's the same thing when we look into Hinduism. There's different lines of thinking in Hinduism. And, and you could see when the priestly caste 
uh, the Paraman cast started to take over, everything's very, very similar between what we have in Judaism with the animal sacrifices, uh, with the elevation of, again, the patriarchy. We see that also in Hinduism. And we see the caste society, you know, caste, um, the caste framework develop at that time too, which then many rebelled against. Uh, you know, the founder of Sikhism, we talked about uh, Guru Nanak, and also the founder of Jainism, they broke off because of that imbalance. All beings, they believed, are equal. doesn't matter if you're male or female. And, you know, this type of infectious patriarchal society that has so poisoned the planet, uh, they saw that. And that's why they went off and did their own thing. Not all forms of Gnosticism thought that the material universe uh, was inherently evil. The system that we're in, the influence of these beings, you know, yeah, they, they create a dark, dark um, matrix for us. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, so what do we do to start to rectify this? What do we do to start to bring balance? And really, you know, if you if you are a mom or a nurturer, nurture yourself, help yourself, you, you know, or your mom, you know, call your mom, give her some love. You know, these moms out there are just nurturers too. I'm going to say nurturers because men are very nurturing too. So it goes on, for I tell you truly, evils and dangers innumerable lie in wait for the sons of men. Beelzebub, the prince of all devils, the source of every evil, lies in wait in the body of all the sons of men. He is death, the lord of every plague, and taking upon him a pleasing raiment, he tempts and entices the sons of men. Riches does he promise, and power, and splendid palaces, and garments of gold and silver, and a multitude of servants, all these he promises. Renown, uh, renown and glory as well, fornication and lustfulness, gluttony and wine bibing, riotous living and slothfulness and idle days. And he entices everyone by that to which their heart is most inclined. And in that day, the son of men have already become the slaves of all these vanities and abominations. And then in payment thereof, he snatches from the sons of men all those things which the earthly mother gave them so abundantly. He takes from them their breath, their blood, their bone, their flesh, their bowels, their ears, and their eyes. And the breath of the Son of Man becomes short and stifled, full of pain, and ever smelling like the breath of unclean beasts. And his blood becomes thick and evil smelling like the water of swamps. It clots and blackens like the night of death. And his bones become hard and knotted. It melts away within and breaks asunder as a stone falling down upon the rock, and then his flesh waxes fat and watery, it rots and putrefies with scabs and boils that are an abomination, and his bowels become full with abominable filthiness, with oozing streams of decay. It's pretty gross, guys. (laughs) Multitudes of abominable worms have their habitation there, and his eyes grow dim till dark night enshrouds them, and his ears become stopped like the silence of a grave, And last of all shall the erring of Son of Man lose his life. For he kept not the laws of his mother and added sin to sin, therefore are taken from him all the gifts of earthly mother, breath, blood, bone, flesh, bowels, ears, and eyes, and after all else, life, which the earthly mother crowned his body. But if the erring Son of Man be sorry for his sins and undo them and return again to his earthly mother, And if he do his earthly mother's laws and free himself from Satan's clutches, resisting his temptations, then does the earthly mother receive again her erring son with love and send him her angels that they may serve him. I tell you truly, when the Son of Man resists the Satan that dwells in him and does not his will, in the same hour are found the mother's angels there, that they may serve him with all their power and freely utter and free utterly the son of man from the power of Satan. And for no man can serve two masters, for either he serves Beelzebub and his devils, or else he serves our earthly mother and her angels. Either he serves death or he serves life. I tell you truly, happy are those who do the laws of life and wander not upon the paths of death. For in them the forces of life wax strong and they escape the plagues of death. And all around him, and about him listened to his words with amazement for the word was with power and he taught quite otherwise than the priests and the scribes 
And, you know, I just wanted to share too, like we typically I seem to wake up at 3 a.m., you know, and many of you guys do too. And it's an hour that is one in which uh, the higher powers can work on us. You know, the Octurians come by and help us with our progress as far as ascension. Um, and I'll generally start doing a mantra to Lakshmi, who is, again, a mother goddess, an earth type of goddess in, in a way, um, a divine feminine, without a doubt. And invariably, an angel comes by. And the angel comes by as soon as we start doing the mantra to Lakshmi. Yeah, he does. He comes by and, you know, he looks at our energy, but he also uses our energy. He uses our energy to help. Um, you know, there's been so much damage on this uh, planet with the, with the, I don't even want to say the, the word, what they've done to this planet. You guys know the experiments and stuff that they've done that has really ripped holes through, uh, through time space. And this is something that they are trying to rectify, you know, a lot of angels, a lot of beings who can create a type of bonding energy, an endless bonding energy that they can help uh, repair those holes in time space and help the mother. Yes, and this is where so many people just can't understand how this angel works under Gabriel and yet is also working with Lakshmi, which is a, a Vedic Hindu deity. But Vedic Hindu in the sense that that's the humanity that knows of her in that particular name or aspect. It's a current of divine energy. It, it's the, it's a current of divine love. So, you know, again, those things are of human design. We, we use certain labels. In different traditions, we use different labels. But ultimately, we're talking about the same currents of energy, the same streams of consciousness. And that's what the little minds of men have a hard time understanding. Mm, that's where our belief systems that have been fed to us since the time we could actually hear um, they've been working to keep us from expanding ourselves and looking to other deities for help. But I promise you, these other deities, they don't have a problem working with each other. It's us. And this is key, this this next uh, part here. Um, very key. So the sun was now set and they departed not to their homes. They sat around Jesus and asked him. You see, there's like a campfire there with Yeshua and he's answering questions. We could vision that very clearly. Master, which are these laws of life? Rest with us a while longer and teach us. We would listen to your teachings that we may be healed and become righteous. And Yeshua said to him and sat down in their midst and said, I tell you truly, none can be happy except he do the law. And the others answered, we all do the laws of Moses, our lawgiver, even as they are written in the holy scriptures. And Jesus answered, seek not the law in your scriptures. For the law is life, whereas the scriptures are dead. I tell you truly, Moses received not his laws from God in writing, but through the living word. The law is the living word of the living God to the living prophets for all living men. In everything that there is life is the law written. You find it in the grass, in the trees, in the rivers, in the mountains, in the birds of the heavens, in the fishes of the sea. But seek it chiefly in yourselves, for I tell you truly, all living things are nearer to God than the scripture, which is without life. God so made life and all living things so that they might be by the everlasting word, teach the laws of the true God to man. God wrote not the laws in the pages of books, but in your heart and in your spirit. They are in your breath, your blood, your bone, in your flesh, your bowels, your eyes, your ears, and in every little part of your body. They are present in the air, in the water, in the earth, in the plants, in the sunbeams, in the depths, and in the heights. They all speak to you, that you may understand the tongue and will of the living God. This is like so different, but now this hits home. I mean, to me, this is obvious. It's not about you know, sets of laws. It's about life itself, consciousness itself, having respect and love for it. But you shut your eyes that you may not see, and you shut your ears that you may not hear. I tell you truly that scripture is the work of man, but life and all its hosts are the work of our God. Wherefore do you not listen to the words of God which are written in his book and his works? And wherefore do you study the dead scriptures, which are the works of the hands of men? 
right you know what does this say this is basically saying live live your life and don't always go to these books for these rules and everything just live out of the joy of living and compassion yep so just to say that again wherefore do you not listen to the words of god which are written in his works in nature all around you and wherefore do you study the dead scriptures which are the works of the hands of men now, you know, if this was Oppenheimer Ranch and this was Diamond, he would say, and that is a boom. <laughs> boom. <laughs> right? Because that, look at around you. Look around you. What has all the scripture gotten you? When you look at the scripture, the dead works of the hands of men, and not see what is all around us so abundantly and is being so abused. It's just, you know, that's a boom. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. I mean, it's just out there. It's laid right out there. And of course, these are writings that are kept from us. You know, these are not common and found in, in the Bible. How may we read the laws of God elsewhere than in the scriptures, they asked. Where are they written? Read them to us from there where you see them, for we know nothing else but the scriptures which we've inherited from our forefathers. Tell us the laws of which you speak, that hearing them we may be healed and justified. So Yeshua said, You do not understand the words of life because you are in death. Darkness darkens your eyes, and your ears are stopped with deafness. For I tell you, it profits you not at all that you pour over dead scriptures, if by your deeds you deny him who has given you the scriptures. I tell you truly, God and his laws are not in that which you do, they are not in the gluttony and the wine bibing, neither in the riotous living or in lustfulness or seeking after riches, nor yet the hatred of your enemies. For all these things are far from the true God and his angels. But all these things come from the kingdom of darkness and the Lord of all evils. And all these things do you carry in yourselves. And so the word and power of God enter not into you, because all manner of evil and all manner of abominations have their dwelling in your body and your spirit. If, you're, if you will that the living God's word and his power may enter you, defile not your body and your spirit, for the body is the temple of the spirit and the spirit is the temple of God. Purify therefore the temple that the Lord of the temple may dwell within and occupy a place that is worthy of him. And from all the temptations of your body and your spirit coming from Satan, withdraw beneath the shadow of God's heaven. Renew yourselves and fast, for I tell you truly that Satan and his plagues may only be cast out by fasting and by prayer. Go by yourself and fast alone and show your fasting to no man. The living God shall see it and great shall be your reward. And fast till Beelzebub and all his evils depart from you, and all the angels of our earthly mother come to you and serve you. For I tell you truly, except that you fast, you shall never be freed from the power of Satan and from all disease that comes from Satan. Fast and pray fervently, seeking the power of the living God for your healing. While you fast, eschew the sons of men and seek our earthly mother's angels, for he that seeks shall find. Seek the fresh air of the forest and of the fields, and there in the midst of them shall you find the angel of air. Put off your shoes and your clothing, and suffer the angel of air to embrace all of your body. Then breathe long and deep, and the angel of air may be brought within you. Oh boy, that's we're talking qigong there, aren't we? Aren't we talking qigong there? I tell you truly, the angel of air shall cast out of your body all uncleanness which defiled it without and within. And thus shall all ev evil smelling and unclean things rise out of you, as the smoke of fire curls upwards and is lost in the sea of the air. For I tell you truly, holy is the angel of air who cleanses all that is unclean and makes all evil smelling things of a sweet odor. No man may come before the face of God whom the angel of the air lets not pass. Truly, all must be born again by air and by truth, for your body breathes the air of the earthly mother, and your spirit breathes the truth of the heavenly Father. After the angel of air, seek the angel of water. Put off your shoes and your clothing and suffer the angel of water to embrace all your body. Cast yourselves wholly into its enfolding arms, and as often as you move the air with your breath, move your body with the water also. I tell you truly, the angel of water shall cast out 
of your body all uncleanliness which defiles it without and within, and all unclean and evil-smelling things shall flow out of you even as the uncleanliness of garments washed in water flow away and are lost in the stream of the river. I tell you truly, holy is the angel of water who cleanses all that is unclean and makes all evil-smelling things of a sweet odor. No man may come before the face of God whom the angel of water has not let pass. In very truth, all must be born again of water and of truth, for your body bathes in the river of the earthly life and your spirit bathes in the river of life everlasting. For you receive your blood from the earthly mother and your truth from our heavenly Father. Think not it sufficient that the angel of water embrace you outwards only. I tell you truly, the uncleanliness within is greater by much than the uncleanliness without. And he who cleanses himself without but remains unclean is like a tomb that outwards are painted fair, but within full of all manner of horrible uncleanliness and abominations. So I tell you truly, suffer the angel of water to baptize you also within, that you might become free from all your past sins, and that within, likewise, you may become pu as pure as the river's foam sporting in the sunlight. Seek therefore a large trailing gourd, having a stalk of a length of a man. Take it, take out its innards and fill it with water from the river, which the sun has warmed. Hang it upon a branch of a tree and kneel upon the ground before the angel of water, and suffer the end of the stalk of the trailing gourd to enter uh, your hind parts, that the water may flow through all your bowels. Actually, talking cleansing with an enema. Yes, they sure are, aren't they? That's interesting. This is fascinating stuff, isn't it? Afterwards, rest kneeling on the ground before the angel of water and pray to the living God that he will forgive you and all your past sins. Pray to the angel of water that he will free your body from every uncleanness and disease and then let the water run from your body that it may carry away from it all unclean and evil smelling things of Satan. And you shall see with your eyes and smell with your nose all the abominations and uncleanliness which defiled the temple of your body even all the sins which abode in your body, tormenting you with all manner of pains. I tell you truly, baptism with water frees you from all these things. Renew your baptizing with water on every day of your fast till the day which you see that water that which flows out of you is as pure as the river's foam. Then betake your body to the coursing river, and there in the arms of the angel of water render thanks to the living God that he has freed you from your sins. And this holy baptizing by the angel of water is... Rebirth unto a new life. For your eyes shall henceforth see, and your ears shall hear. Send no more, therefore, after your baptism, that the angels of air and water may eternally abide within you and serve you evermore. And if afterward there remain within you aught of your past sins and uncleanliness, seek the angel of sunlight. Put off your shoes and your clothing, and suffer the angel of sunlight to embrace all of your body. Then breathe long and deeply that the angel of sunlight may be brought within you, and the angel of sunlight shall cast out of your body all evil smelling and unclean things, which defile it within and without. And all unclean and evil smelling things shall rise from you, even as darkness of night fades before the brightness of the rising sun. For I tell you truly, holy is the angel of sunlight who cleans all the uncleanliness and makes all evil smelling things of a sweet odor. None may come before the face of God, whom the angel of sunlight lets not pass. Truly, all must be born again of sun and of truth, for your body basks in the sunlight of the earthly mother, and your spirit basks in the sunlight of the truth of the heavenly Father. The angels of air and of water and of, and of sunlight are brethren. They were given to the Son of Man that they might serve him, and that might, he might go always from one to the other. Holy likewise is their embrace. They are indivisible children of the earthly mother, so do not put asunder those whom earth and heaven have made one. Let these three brother angels enfold you every day and let them abide within you through all your fasting. For I tell you truly, the power of devils, all sins, and uncleanliness shall depart in haste from a body which is embraced by these three angels. As thieves flee from a deserted house in the coming of the Lord of the house, one by one, one by the window, one by the roof, each where he is found and whither he is able, even so shall flee from your bodies all devils of evil and past ends, and all uncleanliness and diseases which defiled the temple of your bodies. When the earthly mother's angels enter into your bodies in such wise that the lords of the temple repossess it again, 
Then shall all evil smells depart in haste by your breath and by your skin, corrupt waters by your mouth and by your skin, by your hinder and by your private parts. All these things shall you see with your eyes and smell with your nose and touch with your hands. And when all sins and uncleanliness are gone from your body, your blood shall become as pure as our earthly mother's blood and as the rivers foam sporting in the sunlight. And your breath shall become as pure as the breath of odorous flowers, your flesh as pure as the flesh of fruits reddening upon the leaves of the tree. The light of your eye as clear and as bright as the brightness of the sun shining upon the blue sky. And now shall all the angels of the earthly mother serve you, and your breath, and your blood, and your flesh shall be one with the breath, blood, and flesh of the earthly mother. And your spirit also may become one with the spirit of your heavenly father. For truly no one can reach the heavenly father unless through the earthly mother, even as no newborn babe can understand the teachings of his father till his mother has suckled him, bathed him, nursed him, put him to sleep, and nurtured him. While the child is yet small, his place is with his mother, and he must obey his mother. When the child is grown up, his father takes him to work as side in the field, and the child comes back to his mother only when the hour of dinner and supper is come. And now his father teaches him that he may become skilled in the works of his father. And when the father sees that his son understands his teachings and does his work well, he gives him all his possessions, that they may belong to his beloved son, and that his son may continue his father's work. I tell you truly, happy is the son who accepts the counsel of his mother and walks therein. And a hundred times more happy is the son who accepts and walks also in the counsel of his father. For it was said to you, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the earth. But I say to you, sons of man, Honor your earthly mother and keep all her laws, that your days may be long on this earth. And honor your, honor your heavenly father, that eternal life may be yours in the heavens. For the heavenly father is a hundred times greater than all fathers by seed and by blood, and greater is the earthly mother than all mothers by the body. And dearer is the son of man in the eyes of his heavenly father and of his earthly mother than are children in the eyes of their fathers by seed and by blood, and of their mothers by the body. And more wise are the words and laws of your heavenly father and of your earthly mother than the words and the will of all your fathers by seed and by blood and also of all your mothers by the earth. And of more worth also is the inheritance of your heavenly father and your earthly mother, the everlasting kingdom of earthly and heavenly life, than all the inheritances of your fathers by seed and blood, and all of your mothers by the body. So, I mean, it has a lot about how to live a good life, how to live a healthy life, and how everything is already here for us. It's before us. It's right here, right now. We need not wait to get healed. You know, we don't have to do anything special. We don't need to see anybody special. It tells us how to use the elements to heal ourselves and, and then how, how to just live a good, happy life. And so we could see, obviously, as we've said before, like when you look at, you know, snippets from the Bible, you see one. And we'll, we're going to pull up a lot more examples in future videos. You'll see one sentence and that's it. But when you go into the other books that are out there, m most of which were just destroyed and tried to be covered up, then you get whole paragraphs or even chapters that explain the whole thing. Uh, half of our story has been taken away, half of it, and it's created in balance. And so that's, it's just so obvious and clear. And so, you know, we see we are spirit and flesh, you know, we're both. And so half of the equation is miss, missing. And thus half, that's such a big part of why we have so much suffering upon the earth. It is, you know, and this is where we have to do what we can with what's in front of us to bring balance back into place. So the Essenes, many of them lived in communities unto themselves, away from society, because they viewed society as being corrupted and by Satan, by the adversary. Uh, whether we call him Satan, whether we call him, the, you know, the Draco and the I word or the C-A-B-A-L word and... You know, all these different minions that are giving us a horrible matrix to live within. So they lived outside of it, most of them. Some, some of them also did live in the matrix and came and went. Uh, but they lived communally. So they shared everything. They worked towards a common goal. And, you know, they were very, very 
beautiful, peaceful people. Oh my gosh, yes. And, you know, they, they helped each other. They were not like, um, I guess, backstabbing. They weren't out to hurt each other. They weren't out to like move somebody over so they could get to the front and a life that's really super hectic in the rat race that we live in now. They assisted each other in making it to the top. They did. They worked together. They worked in peace. And, you know, they lived outside of the system. Yeah. And I'm sure if, if somebody did have problems, then they worked on that together as well. And, and Yeshua, you know, who is the, you know, is the real name for Jesus. Again, Jesus is the Latinized version of the Greek, Jesus. Uh, he was in the scene. You know, this is what we have gotten. This is what I've always felt, that he was in the scene. Right, yes, he has learned from the Essenes, lived with the Essenes, um, everything that you could imagine, you know, he was part of this big Essene picture. And we also have, you know, many years missing of his life, which he was traveling the world and learning and growing and sharing. Right, he was, he was really, truly a a being that tried to come and, and help and put things back on track. Exactly. So thank you guys for being part of this family. Make sure you are subscribed, have the bell clicked. Thanks for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon because we couldn't do it without you guys. Anybody needs to make an appointment with us, reach us at EEARTS at Proton Mail or Evolutionary Energy Arts at gmail.com. And Cindy's going to give us a ding. God bless and namaste. God bless. Namaste.